Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Selby series. Selby is one of 11 subdivisions of the county of North Yorkshire. It's made up of 74 civil parishes, a lot of which are very small. Which one are we in this week? Welcome back to the district of Selby once again, ladies and gentlemen. We've only got seven more to cover here in this part of North Yorkshire, which is frightening considering it uh, only feels like yesterday that I began this one. Anyway, this is a place that's only two miles away from Selby itself, just off the A63. And it's a place which seems to be continually growing. Look at all these new build houses. These have gone up in recent years and there are some more still being built in the very far distance there. I can still see some construction work going on. So this place is growing and its name is Thought Willoughby. This Selby episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Thought Willoughby, a growing settlement just off the A63 to the west of Selby, historically part of the West Riding of Yorkshire until 1974. The village used to be on the A63, but since the construction of the Selby Bypass, the main road through the village has been renumbered to the A1238. Its name is of partly Scandinavian origin. Thorpe, as we already know, means an outlying farmstead or hamlet. Willoughby derives from the Willoughby family, who were resident here in the 13th century. As such, 1276 records show it as Thorpe Willoughby, whereas in the Doomsday Book it was recorded as just Torp. Overwhelmingly residential, Thorpe Willoughby is effectively a square-shaped village, albeit tilted slightly when you look at it on an overhead map. Thorpe Willoughby has a pub called The Fox, two local shops, a primary school, a village green, a village hall, and a sports field with an associated bar. Being close to Selby, it's a good commuter village. It's not a small place either. In fact, there have been several new build areas spring up here over the past few years. It's still growing too. So let's go for a wander and see what awaits us today. Our route here begins on the A1238, the former A63, at the village's one and only pub. This is the Fox Inn, a traditional village pub with a warm, friendly environment, according to its very own website. You can reach Thought Willoughby very easily by bus, and this stop here is right outside the pub. Three buses call here, the 64, the 64S and the 164, and they all provide commuters with access to Selby. Next is Dam Lane, which is named for Selby Dam. That's a watercourse which forms the northern parish boundary. Dam Lane is crossed by a railway line here at Thorpe Hall level crossing. There's a second crossing known as Thorpe Gates on the A1238, which once had a signal box. At the eastern end of the village we see a footpath sign directing walkers along the Selby Horseshoe. We've not met this before, it's a nine mile long trail which begins at Selby Abbey and it includes the Selby Canal towpath and Selby Dam. So all these new houses are to the east of the village. They're being built by Miller Homes, as you can see here. 
and there's a pedestrian route through them so you don't have to walk around the entire estate you can just walk straight down this this footpath in fact this is actually a bridleway it's, it's a, bit, a bit inaccurate to call it a footpath it's actually a bridleway and uh, it was a public right of way before these houses started to be constructed so obviously they still need to leave that um, accessible otherwise that breaks all kinds of laws you can't just close off a public right of way and as you can see there are still some uh, houses being constructed in the far distance we're not going to go all the way down there there's, there's not much point you can see what these houses are like from these examples here so for that reason we're just going to turn back on ourselves and head back to the main road next next we take a shortcut through one of the many housing estates thought willoughby has I thought this was pretty thoughtful. You can get some apples and plums from this house as long as you're careful of the wasps. If you prefer to buy your fruit insect free, you can do so at Fox Lane stores. This is one of two rows of shops within the village. Also here we have Thorpe Fryer, the local chippy, and also a pharmacy. The pharmacy used to be another shop called Thorpe News and it housed the village post office. This pillar box outside is the only remaining memory of it now. Thorpe Fryer also used to be called Mitchell's Fisheries. Continuing down Fox Lane we come to the only religious building in the village, St Francis of Assisi Church. This is an Anglican and Methodist partnership that welcomes everyone. So there's a small garden here with a tree, uh, which has got a, a plaque underneath it. It's in memory of Fred Soudan, a founder member of St. Francis Church, a member of Selby District and Bridlington Lions. And that you'll find in this corner. Now we're on Field Lane, and this is where we find the second row of shops. Simply known as Field Lane Shops, this row features Hearts, which is a coffee house and deli. There's also a Go Local, which used to be Savile's convenience store. Funnily enough, Thought Willoughby's Pharmacy used to be located where Hearts is now. Around the back of these shops, we have a footpath which traverses a small green area, and this continues through the next estate. I walked the entire length of this footpath all the way up to Dane Avenue via Almond Close. It's good to see this kind of thing. Urban sprawl has a habit of making places seem very clustered, and that's not the case here. Despite that, you still can't get away from the fact though that Thought Willoughby is a very residential place. Some 2,725 people live here, and with new houses going up all the time, well that's only going to get higher. So this part of the route is very residential. I haven't really filmed a lot in this section, to be honest with you. Um, but it's not been dull. I mean, some of the, the gardening here is absolutely fantastic. I've just come along this street here where there's brilliant gardens up there, here, there, and there's probably some more a bit further up. So it's always nice to see a, a well-kept garden, I think. My mother is quite good at gardening. I, I'm not very good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've kind of grown up with the idea that having a nice garden is uh, key to having a nice home in general. And uh, it's uh, heartwarming to see a lot of people also follow that philosophy out here. At the end of this estate, we're back to Fox Lane, only this time we're at the enormous Village Green, which is located just off the A1238. There's a parish notice board here, so I did the honours. Six left in Selby now, folks. The Green features the village's war memorial. It's a simple octagonal structure with the words, lest we forget, written upon it, which stands underneath a flagpole. There's a small rest area with benches in front of this too. This is also where Thought Willoughby's Christmas tree is located, year round by the looks of it. It reminded me a bit of neighbouring Hambleton, who do the same thing and just switch the lights on when it's time to. The green also has a huge play area too. Yes, I was tempted by that adventure trail, but no, I didn't go for it this time. There's more than enough here to keep Thought Willoughby's young ones occupied. And speaking of children, so if you walk across the green like I just have, you take a left turn, you come to this footpath here, which runs back towards Thought Willoughby's primary school, which you can just see above these railings here. That's the next stop. 
At the end of Lonsborough Grove is Thorpe Willoughby Community Primary School. The lack of documentary evidence otherwise tells me that this is the only school that this village has ever had in its entire history. Behind that and back the other way towards the road again is the village hall. This was erected in the year 2000 according to its date stone above the door. It's Thorpe's community centre, good for all kinds of parties and events. Next we go out onto the A1238 again. This was a turnpike at one time. What I'm showing you here is Thorpe's turnpike stone from a piece of the original intro to this video which I made a mess of. This is near the Fox Inn. Now we're at the western end of the village where we find another new estate which has a small playground of its own. This street looks relatively mundane but I'll be surprised if it doesn't get a few magical visitors. So it's the name of this street that's captured my attention. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some Harry Potter fans out there. Look at this. This is genuinely Privet Drive. Now for those who aren't familiar with Harry Potter, Privet Drive is where Harry Potter lived uh, with his Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia, the Dursleys and Dudley Dursley of course. I wonder if uh, number four Privet Drive here in uh, Thorpe Willoughby has anybody with the name, the surname of Dursley living in it. Well there's number four right there, that house right there. Could we call that Harry Potter's house maybe? Possibly? I don't know. I wonder if it gets some attention. Back over the A1238, this part of Thought Willoughby has some of its oldest properties. It also has this stream cutting through it. That's Town Dyke, which flows into Selby Dam. The white building in this shot is Thought Willoughby's manor house. It's one of a few buildings along here which predate most of the modern village. This main walk will end by showing you some of these. Thorpe Hall, by the way, the grandest of these old buildings, which is Grade 2 listed, is off Dam Lane. Interestingly though, it isn't in Thorpe Willoughby Parish because it sits on the other side of Selby Dam. That means it's actually within Selby's parish boundaries, as is a monastic moated site located behind it. Nonetheless, I've taken the liberty of including it in today's picture bit, because the Selby episode will have enough in it. Okay, we're back at the car, and uh, that's taken me an hour and 22 minutes to walk around Thought Willoughby. That's pretty reasonable, pretty good going, I think, uh, considering the size of this place. Now, there's one more place I do want to go while we're here in Thought Willoughby before we leave it behind. To do that, though, I've got to hop into the trusty old motor and drive to it because it's towards the south of the village, and I couldn't really fit it in on the walking route. So we'll go there to finish this one off. But before we do that, you guys need today's picture bit.
So to end this video, I've come to the end of Field Lane. And as you can see here, it's a dead end because the A63 is here. Now, when this was built, it cut Field Lane into two pieces. You've got the piece down there that I've just driven down and the bit we saw earlier. You can get across the A63 via this little public footpath, which will take you to the other half of it. It's down here. I'm not going to walk onto it because I think you get the idea from this. The other half of the road is down this footpath down there. Now, one thing I haven't shown you yet is Thought Willoughby's playing field. And so I'll do that to finish this one off. It's at the end of Field Lane over here. And even this part of the village is not exempt, shall we say, from new builds because where I've parked the car just here is dead opposite a brand new area being constructed as we speak down there. So uh, even this part of the village is getting new builds too. So the playing field is back this way. So let's hop in the car again and check that out to finish off. Our last stop is the village playing field located on Field Lane. This is run by the Thorpe Willoughby Sports Association, which was formed in the early 1990s, and it's a not-for-profit organisation managed by volunteers. It does benefit from the help of some paid staff based here at the Field Lane Sports Centre. All the profits are ploughed back into the grounds and facilities for the benefit of both the young and the old. Thorpe United, the village football team, play here. Founded in 1991, they're members of the York Football League Premier Division. They have junior teams which begin at the under fives and their club colours are red and blue. Here's the weird thing though about this part of the village. It's also not in Thorpe Willoughby Parish. It's actually in Hambleton. The boundary is the edge of the playing field between it and the houses on Dane Avenue. Aren't boundaries wonderful? And uh, apparently, this is also the venue for Thought Willoughby's Slimming World Club on a Tuesday, half nine in the morning and nine in the morning. There you go. There you go, that's Thought Willoughby people. Not a bad little place, is it? And uh, the next place we're going is uh, a site bigger than this. Uh, in fact, it could well take me about two hours to walk around. It's uh, not quite in Selby, but there are parts of Selby which kind of fall within its boundaries, if that makes any sense. So, uh, yeah, we'll head towards there right now. This has been the parish of Thorpe Willoughby, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.